irreverent and fun. It's something that we are encouraged to be at DreamHost. My second WordCamp San Francisco talk was how uh, don't use WordPress multi-site. So if you don't get the idea yet that some of this is going to be tongue in cheek, um, I like to help people figure out how to do things by making it easier to digest. And humor is definitely one of the best ways, I feel, to understand things. If you've been to WordCamp Ventura or you saw this talk on uh, WordPress TV, this is not the same talk. Some of it's familiar. Some of it is going to be a little bit different. So as an additional warning, I don't want you guys to get scared. I'm going to point out a lot of the things that people do, and some people may feel that I'm pointing directly at you. I promise you, uh, the guy that I was working with on Friday who hit pretty much all of these points is not you. He, not even in the United States. So I'm pretty sure he's not here today. And even then, I'm not talking about him personally. These are mistakes and problems that a lot of people have because they come into a process with one assumption, and when that assumption gets challenged or changed, they don't really take it well. Um, if what I say to you makes you think that I am talking specifically about you, it's OK. We can learn from that. I always tell people that I'm kind of embarrassed the minute I, I read an email reply that I've sent because sometimes I get a reply from someone and I'm like, wow, I was really dumb. How did I not think of this in the first place? I missed something completely obvious. The fact is that these things happen. You make mistakes, you learn from them. It's OK to make mistakes. It's just code. We can edit it and move forward. And the other thing to remember about WordPress specifically is while we're not always nice to each other, we all come from the same good place where we want to make something better for everyone. And if we can keep that in mind while we're working with people who are telling us things like, you've written your code wrong, it's not coming from a place of, you've written your code wrong and you should feel bad. It's come from, you've written your code wrong and I'd like to help you make it better. I'd like to help you make it more secure. I want you to make it safer for everyone. So we really are nice people, even me and Otto. And I know that sometimes people get mails from me and Otto and they're like, well, they're just such hardliners. They're so stern about things. Text is a horrible medium. And most of the time when you're talking about plugins, you're communicating with people via Slack, via email. These are terrible ways to impart on you what someone actually sounds like. Today, uh, some of the people that I've worked with regularly say that when they read what I write, they can hear my voice in their head, and they know, oh, she's rolling her eyes right now. But they know me. And you guys are going to be lucky now, because now you'll know me, so when you get an email from me from a plugins team, you'll be able to go, oh, I know what face she's making right now. And that's okay. It helps you communicate with other people. It lets you put a face on what's going on behind the wall. We really want to see your cool plugins succeed. When we get submissions to the WordPress.org repository, even if we think that the plugin is a really silly idea and we can't understand why someone would make a plugin called Rickroll that changes your videos to be Rickroll, <laughs> that's mine. It's okay. We don't have to like the concept of your plugin, and we certainly don't always do this, but we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you are a good person with good intentions who wants to help the community. We're never trying to be mean just for the sake of being mean. We're never singling you out just for the sake of singling you out. We might get frustrated sometimes if we have to explain the same thing multiple times, but we're not ever trying to be mean. So with these warnings in place, let's get ready to go. OK, here's a serious warning. Everything I'm going to talk about is not something that will get your plugin rejected. These are things that will delay your plugin's approval. And if they're not corrected, yes, they may end up with a rejection. If you get a plugin, or you get an email from plugins at wordpress.org, it's often the worst day of your life. If you've already got a plugin and you get an email that says, we've removed your plugin from the wordpress.org repository, and you get it on a Friday afternoon, and you know that you've got a big security issue, and now you have to fix it. That's a really lousy day for you because you've basically got a weekend where your plugin's probably not going to be put back up until Monday-ish because the people who do reviews are volunteers. We have lives. We have families. I like to spend Sunday running around with my friends playing archery. You know, Otto likes to go to barbecues. Pippin's got kids and a wife. I mean, we've all got families and lives and things to do, and it means that on the weekends we like to spend time with people, which sucks. 
for people who get those emails. But when you've just submitted your plugin and you get the email that says, it'll have your plugin name in brackets, and then it'll say that an email from the Word, uh, this is from the WordPress.org repository, and in there, it'll have a nice little intro that says, hi, we got your plugin review, we found some issues with your submission. And then it'll start to break it out, and it's kind of a form email, and for that I apologize that it's a form email. But it's the only way to get through 35 to 40 submissions a day. 35 to 40 different plugins a day. Each plugin must be downloaded. Each plugin has to have every line of code read. We have to test it. And we have to make sure it's going to work on the latest version of WordPress. Sometimes the plugin is two lines. This is really easy. Other times the plugin is like BuddyPress. I don't know if you've seen how big that is. It takes a couple of hours to sit and sift through all that code. And the worst part about it is JTrip is a way better coder than I am. So the first time I saw one of his big plugins like that, I just sat there and I'm like, can I just approve it and trust that he knows this better than I do? <laughs> we did still spot check it to make sure he didn't miss anything obvious. Uh, nothing I'm going to talk about here. Well, actually, the things that I want to talk about are things that are weird, and some of them are kind of bad. But the biggest thing you can do is if you get the email from plugins at wordpress.org, stop, read the whole email all the way down to the bottom where it tells you exactly what to do. I promise it does. It has a nice little thing that says, please reply to this email. Reply to the email. The number one reason a plugin gets rejected from the repository is that seven days have gone by and you have not replied to your email. If you submit a plugin and then immediately go on vacation, that was silly of you. <laughs> This happens a lot in the summertime. Uh, we have a lot higher rejection percentage around between Thanksgiving and the week after New Year's and between uh, well, when school lets out and when school picks up again because a lot of people take long vacations, especially folks in Europe. I am so jealous of them, America. Please learn how to do vacation better. Uh, also, if you don't read the emails, we kind of think that you're going to be one of those people that are going to be a handful. Because you're going to be one of those rebels, those rule breakers, those people that just want to do their thing and don't want to figure out how to work in this situation, in this community. So the first thing that you, oops, I did that wrong. So the first thing that you can do that is a not a good idea to submit your plugin is to submit busted code. I have a Macintosh and I have a Linux box. If I can't open your zip file, or when I take that zip and upload it to a WordPress site and it errors out, we have a problem. If you use a RAR or a GZ file, that's OK. We'd rather you didn't. Zip is a little bit more universal right now. And we can immediately take that zip and upload it to WordPress. But if I can't open it, you're going to get a very generic email that says, hi, we got your plugin, but we couldn't open it. Please send it to us again. If you send us a bad URL, Sometimes if it's GitHub, we can figure it out, and that's not such a big deal. But other times, it'll be a weird typo in there. And we're going to guess a couple of times to try to figure out. Somebody submitted like WordPressMySite.com, and it took me a while to figure out that it was WordPress.MySite.com, and it was HTTPS. Neither of those things were clear in the submission, but that just took me 10, 15 minutes to deduce what you actually meant, which means that's 10, 15 minutes that delays everyone's reviews which means you've got 34 people behind you that now have to wait a little longer. So take the time to make sure that the URL that you give us works. Also remember to test your plugin as a zip. Once you've made that awesome plugin, make the zip, toss it up on a site with debug on. We're all testing with debug on, right? OK. <laughs> I heard you. Uh, make sure it works. Just make sure you can install it like that. We get a lot of header errors where there are no plugin headers found because people have written the code and they've got it all on their computer, but they don't remember to copy it all over to wherever their repository is. Make sure that the zip unzips properly before you send it to us. And also, if you're using GitHub, their master zips do not include submodules. It sucks. I get a lot of things where I'll open it up and it'll say vendor, and I'll, oh, okay, they've got some submodules in here, and I go into the vendors and it's empty. And then I double check, nope, they're actually calling files that are supposed to be there. I gotta go to your Git repository, find it, figure out what the submodules are, and check it out there. This is not your fault. This is just something you should know that GitHub is really annoying. If you want another thing that GitHub's annoying about, if you fork a project, you can't search it. That drives me crazy. <laughs> just. Oh, I'm going to fork a project so that I can do it on my own. Oh, but now I can't use GitHub search anymore. Thanks, GitHub. That was great. 
Don't use bad URLs. I touched on that, but this isn't a joke. I get a lot of local host. A lot of local host. I mean, to the point now that in the morning when I open up the queue to see what can I automatically pend or reject, because there are things that we will outright reject, trademark violations. If you submit a, pay, a plugin with just the name PayPal and your email address is not from paypal.com, it gets rejected because we don't think you work for PayPal. It's pretty obvious there. If you do work for PayPal, have them give you an email address. It's really easy. It proves that you're them. But if I get localhost, and I do, I just go down the line and I see what the URLs are. If I see localhost, you're automatically going to get an email. The other thing is that with Bitbucket, they have a way to make really private repositories. And this is more popular with, Git, with Bitbucket than it is with GitHub. I don't know why. But people send us lockdown repositories all the time. Or zips that require passwords. But they don't give us the passwords. And sometimes people will tell us, well, I'm doing this because I don't want people to download my plugin and just use it before it's ready. OK, but you understand that you're going to be submitting your plugin to an open source repository where anyone can look at your code and your change sets and use it and perhaps fork your plugin and expand on it. So this whole secrecy thing is going to get blown up anyway in about a week. Why are we doing this? It's just going to save you a headache also if you check your plugin's URL in an incognito browser. That is the number one fastest way to make sure this is going to work for some stranger like me who downloads it and has to test it. If you're behind a fancy firewall, by the way, uh, prepare to get a notice from us that we say we, we were blocked. We use an anonymizer when we download plugins. The reason for this is our own protection. There have been cases where we've downloaded a plugin, rejected it for various reasons, and the person has come back and been very aggressive and very nasty and uh, essentially harassed and attacked us. In order to protect ourselves and hide our IP addresses so that we don't get stalked, we use an anonymizer. I hate that we have to do that. I hate that other people have made it so we can't have nice things. This is, what ha <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. People are mean to each other. So I mentioned this when I talked about, come on, pay attention. No, nope, it's just not going to work. It's new code. What did I expect? I mentioned this with PayPal. Now you're working. <laughs> That's funny. Really? There's a delay in this, and I'm just going to have to get used to it. It's the first time I've tried it. Um, don't violate trademarks. If you're not Facebook or Elvis, don't pretend to be them. We generally know. Like I said with PayPal, as my example, if you submit a plugin from PayPal, Make sure that you're actually downloading the plugin zip from paypal.com server. Your email is paypal.com. Since we're going to send you an email one way or the other to that email address about your plugin, we'll know right away whether or not it's fake. Because we're going to send it back to you at paypal.com. Oh, it bounced. Silly man. You shouldn't claim to be somebody you're not. And this is one of those things that you think is blindingly obvious. But it runs into problems when you as a company have hired someone to make a plugin. You hire me. I've already got a WordPress.org forum account. I'm just going to use that one. It makes sense, right? Well, there are two problems with this. First off, I own the plugin now, not you. I'm the one that submitted the plugin. It belongs to me. Secondly, my email address doesn't match your company, so it looks a little bit shady. Third of all, if I own the plugin, I've got all the administrator access rights to it, I don't have to add you. I can do evil things if I'm a horrible person. I'm not, mostly. <laughs> If you're hiring someone to make a plugin for your company, you should submit the plugin. Now, this is a double edged sword because it means if there are code problems with the plugin, we're going to email you. And that sucks. Sometimes you don't know. We get a lot of middleman where we get, well, I'm not a programmer. I'm going to have to send this over to the programmers and they're going to have to send me the reply. And it means it does take things a little bit longer than normal to sort out what's going on with the plugin, what's wrong, what's right, and things like that. Be prepared for that delay if you've hired someone and you're acting as the intermediary. The other really important thing to remember is once you've submitted the plugin, when it gets approved, and most of them will, and you've added yourself and you have administrator access, be careful who you add as a committer. People who have commit access have access to wipe out your repository. They've got access to commit. They've got access to delete. Don't give commit access to your plugin to people you don't trust explicitly. If you wouldn't trust them to drive your car, if you wouldn't give them root access to your server, perhaps you may not trust them enough to handle this big plugin for your company. 
don't use somebody else's code. Because not only are you not Elvis, you're not Jayquith. <laughs> I pick him because he's got a plugin that people like to copy all the freaking time. It's the WP login logo plugin. You just drop a logo into your WP content folder, boom, everybody's happy. I see that plugin submitted about every month. That exact plugin. <laughs> not a single change. And I, and I reject the plugin out of hand. They change the name. They have to change the slug. That's all that changes. They just submit it as my WP logo. Uh, <laughs> Forking is awesome. Forking code is why WordPress exists today. It used to be something called B2. Now it's WordPress. We support, we love forking. We love when people take it and make something even more awesome. It is not OK to fork somebody's code and remove their credit or copyright information. Besides the fact that it's just rude, it's actually copyright violation. And if I pop open your code and I see my own code, typos and all, by the way, I might know that you didn't write this. We had someone who took some of my code, forked it, and made an even more awesome plugin, which I thought was great, but she stripped out all my copyright information. I did not tell her it was my code. I emailed it back and I said, hi, we noticed that you have this code from someone else. Please restore the copyright information. Took us about three weeks of emails to get the person to understand that what we literally meant was not rewrite the code and change the typos and fix things and make it look more like yours. No, we literally meant just put the copyright information back, code forked from. That's all she had to do to meet the requirements of copyright. That's it. And we couldn't understand for the longest time why she just didn't want to do this. And I finally asked and I said, I said, you know, we keep going over this. Why don't you put the copyright information back in? What's wrong with that? And she said, well, I didn't want people to think that I didn't write the code myself. And I said, but you didn't. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, but the problem was that I had forked the code originally. So I had not only my copyright information, but the guy who I'd forked from. OK, look, now we have to make sure that you've got both of these things in there. Open source lives because we share, and we share openly, and we attribute credit. It doesn't have a lot of restrictions here. But when you violate those small restrictions, it's a slap in the face to the other guy. I'm generally laid back about these things. I just keep going, dude, fix it. Come on, let's fix it. I don't get angry about it. I understand that people have misconceptions. But if you're the guy who gets the code stolen, boy, that feels like a slap in the face. And sometimes it really annoys people when, when someone makes a great big plugin, they release it as GPL, and somebody else takes that half of it and makes it into a very similar plugin that's basically a competitor. And because it's GPL, they can get away with it. They don't like that. And I understand why people don't like that. There was a huge kerfluffle a few years ago with Jiggershop and WooCommerce. I don't know if you guys remember it. WooCommerce has just been uh, purchased by Automatic. But before all that happened, they had a completely separate plugin. And it worked pretty well. But Jiggershop had another plugin, and it worked phenomenally well. Some of the lead developers from Jiggershop moved over to WooCommerce. The code was then forked and redone as a new version of WooCommerce. I see nothing wrong with this. A lot of people got upset on both sides of the, of the fight, saying, you know, you've stolen code, or you people have stolen code and, and ripped it off and taken it over there. That's not what happened. What they did was perfectly legal by the GPL. What they did was perfectly ethically acceptable by copyright laws as well, because they kept the credit in. They still, to this day, have the credit in. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. What matters is if it's permitted, and it is. We have these fights every day with people that say, well, this plugin has stolen some of my code. And I'll go in and look and say, no, they just forked some of it. They've left your credit in. They've left the copyright information. And there's nothing we can do about it. I'm very sorry you feel that way. It doesn't always go over very well. Credit people, credit them in your readmes. That's the best way to do it. Because not only are you saying that you understand how the community works, but you're telling somebody else a very public thank you for letting me build on yours. And that's going to inspire them to keep contributing to WordPress core. And don't pretend that you're Mark Jayquith. I've met Mark Jayquith. That's just not going to fly. <laughs> this happened yesterday. I, I wrote this like a month ago. This actually happened yesterday. Um, had a plugin. Plugin was submitted. Plugin had a few problems. As we were looking at the plugin, we realized it was the plugin that belonged to someone who had had all of his plugins revoked from the WordPress repository a few weeks ago. This happens occasionally. If you violate the plugin guidelines badly enough, we will remove all of your plugins. 
It takes a lot of work to do this. I mean, you get warned a few times. So if you, you do things like you make sock puppets who give reviews to your own plugins, fake reviews of five stars, or fake reviews of your competitors of one star, we can catch you at it. We're very good at what we do. We will delete the reviews, and we will s email you a slap on the wrist. Hey, these things aren't secret. They're not hard to figure out. We've caught you at it. Stop it. OK. Most people, when warned like that, stop it immediately. Oh, I got caught. A couple of people are really dumb, and they keep doing it. When you keep doing it, then you get your plugin removed, just the one. And that usually forces people to have a more serious conversation. And we say, we're not kidding when we say don't do this. Do you understand why we don't like this? He says, well, if I don't have reviews on my plugins, nobody's going to know to use it. Hmm. Yeah, but you have disingenuous reviews, and they're lies. And that's not right for the users. Let real users leave real reviews. If nobody's leaving a review, Encourage them, but don't bribe them. That's another thing, by the way. Don't bribe your users to leave reviews. There are some people that say, if you leave a five-star review on my plugin, I will give you a free add-on. No, that's bribery. And then I have to send the definition of what bribery is. You think that it's kind of obvious, but it's not. People think, well, I want to reward them for giving a five-star review. It's not quite the right way to do it. I get the idea behind it. But one day, Yesterday, and also many, many moons ago, I opened Skype. I never open Skype. I hate Skype. It's terrible. I don't like the interface. I only use it because my dad uses it. But I opened up Skype so that I could call my dad. And I noticed I had five messages from someone that said, please add me. That was weird. My dad lives in Japan, so I was up at like 4 in the morning to make this phone call. And I call my dad. I reject all of these, by the way, because I don't like Skype, and I'm not going to use it. And if I don't recognize you, I'm definitely not going to add you. If I do recognize you and I still rejected you, it's just because I hate Skype. <laughs> but so I call my dad, and then I get off, and I'm like, that was really weird that I had those five messages. Well, I'm going to open up Twitter, because now I'm awake, and I'm going to make some coffee, and I'm going to get about my day. Oh, I have a whole mess of tweets at me from the same ID. I was bombarded. He hit me on Google+, he hit me on Facebook, he hit me on Twitter, he hit me on Skype. I'm sure he hit me on some other things that I check even more rarely, like Ello. I, I do it to protect my brand name, okay? I don't actually use these things. What had happened was that I'd reviewed the, this plugin and I'd said that please fix this email. And I'd gotten a reply that didn't fix any of it. I replied right away and said, hey, these things are still wrong. You need to fix them. And it was the weekend. It was a Friday afternoon. I logged off and I went and I hung out with my friends and I had a dinner and I had some folks over and we were playing games and Saturday came and went and I was sitting outside enjoying the sun and Sunday came and went and here it's Monday early morning and this guy is really upset that we didn't reply to the email right away. The guy that we had uh, rejected all of his plugins because we found out that he had, we had removed all of his plugins. He resubmitted all of them with a new ID and I emailed him and I said, if you think that we can't figure out your you with two IDs, uh, <laughs> I understand why he was doing it, because he kept saying, please let me back into the repository. I know I violated the rules, but you should please let me back in. And we said, we already gave you two passes, and you've broken both of them. Uh, no, we're not letting you back in. We're, just sit and be quiet, and we'll discuss it, but I can't promise you anything. We're probably still going to say no. And he said, well, I don't like this answer. I'm going to make a second account, resubmit all my plugins. We caught him at it. We rejected all the plugins, and we said, we know it's you. Please stop. He also, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Skype, the whole nine yards, trying to get a hold of us just so that we could say yes. What that does is tells us we were right in saying no. <laughs> because stalking somebody, and there's a really ugly word here, what that is is harassment. It's a plugin in a free repository. I know that, that when you get emails from us, it puts back your schedule. You maybe had a release planned. It was going to go out on Monday after this long weekend, and you were going to have everybody do all these things, and you have emails scheduled, and you've got a blog post set up, and we ruined your plans. I'm sorry, but your emergency does not make it my emergency either. You know this one. You've got the boss that comes up to you and says, oh, hey, we need all these things done by tomorrow. And you're like, it's 4 o'clock. Are you insane? But your boss wants you to do those things. You're not my boss. I'm not your boss. We are two people who are volunteering to an open source community having a frank discussion about issues with your code. That's it. Calm down. Don't pester people if you haven't heard from them over a weekend. Definitely don't pester people if you haven't heard from them in two hours. They might have done something else, like maybe made dinner. They might have gone for a bike ride. Things happen. These are real people that you're talking to. And while the emails sometimes are auto-replies, or at least they sound like it, I use a tool called Atext. 
And so when I see somebody who calls WP load in their code, I type in WPP load and it automatically populates, we can't accept this because, and it gives you a list, and it gives you links to things to help you fix your code, explanations why we can't do it. But yes, it's a form, because I see that a lot. It has to be, otherwise I'm not gonna get through 35 plugins a day. If, if each plugin took me 10 minutes to review, 35 plugins is quite a lot of time. I've got a job, a full-time job that I love, and I need to be able to do that and contribute back to WordPress core and contribute to the WordPress support forums and help with the Nux project and do all these other things that I do for WordPress. So yes, we do things that speed ourselves up and they sometimes come across as seeing like a robot. Sometimes people will reply and say, man, these things are sent out by a robot, and I'll reply, beep, boop, beep, because that's the kind of people we are. <laughs> reviews take time. There are 24 hours in a day. There are less than 10 people doing reviews. If your plugin is big and has a problem, or if your plugin is complicated, no matter how small, it is going to take us longer than 10 minutes to review your plugin. If you have a deadline, if you have to have your plugin out by July 1st, it better be submitted today. Consider a month, because if the worst happens and we have to reject it, that's what's going to happen. Um, don't ignore our emails. We're not gonna tweet or text you. We're not gonna hunt you down and find you. If you didn't reply to our emails to say that we said, no, oh, these are your problems, well, you didn't reply to our emails. If the email bounces, we automatically go back and reject your plugin. I, and I know that sounds harsh, but if we don't have a way to get a hold of you and we're only going to use email, we don't have a way to get a hold of you. That's it. Your email, by the way, the one that we use is the one that is on your WordPress.org support forums account. If you change your email, like a lot of people do, and you email us and say, hey, I've submitted this plugin and you guys haven't replied to me, and I look and I see your email, but it doesn't match the one that we sent it to, I'm not going to tell you what's wrong. Because you're not who I think you are. Email is the only way I've got to verify that you are you. I don't, I don't know you, most of you. I know Jayquith, obviously. <laughs> but if I don't know who you are and all I have is this email, that's all I've got. So what I'll tell people is you're emailing from a different account. If this is really you, please use the other account or change your profile to match this email. Pick one. Also, what's really fun is if we tell you that you've been sock puppeting in the forums and you email from one of those accounts to tell us why did you delete my plugin, Think about that for a second. <laughs> you just emailed me from the account that was spamming. And then you turned around and said, but that's not me. And I'm like, okay, you just emailed me from that account, man. Don't do it. We, we, we get it. It was a bad thing. Say, I'm sorry. Don't do it again. Please don't panic. All of the stuff that I just said sounds incredibly basic. This sounds like stuff that is ridiculously commonsensical, right? People get really agitated with their plugins and with their code because they take code personally like they should. You have dreamed up something. You have crafted something out of your own mind. Anybody who tells you, by the way, that that isn't art is an idiot. Writing code requires as much artistic ability as it does technical knowledge. You guys are artists and it hurts when someone comes around and says, this is wrong. That's not how I'm saying it though. And I know it's how it sounds when it's text. Someone comes down from on high and says, you are doing it wrong. No, what I'm actually saying is, hey, this is really interesting. There are some things in here that could be better. Here's how you can make it better. Here's how you can make it more secure. Here's how you can make sure it's not gonna conflict with other plugins, because that's what we want. If your plugin doesn't have any glaring technical problems, you're probably gonna have a plugin in the repo within about four days. If it has some problems, it may take longer. The clock starts from the minute we email you back. You submit the plugin. If you get an email back, you have seven days. I can count. <laughs> Anybody who just saw the six, it was a lie. The six is a lie. You have seven days. That gives you at least one business week, somewhere in there. You have seven days with which to reply and correct all of the problems. If that doesn't happen, you will get a rejection email that will tell you, hey, we've rejected it, but if you've been working with us, that's okay. Let's keep working and fix it. And when we're done and when it's okay, we will tell you to resubmit and give you a secret message so we know to automatically approve it and not re-review you. So yeah, reading those emails is really important. Read the email, reply, be patient, open communication, and remember we're all humans. 
My name is Mika Epstein. I work for DreamHost as the WordPress and DreamPress guru. I do support reviews. I do support forums. I volunteer a lot in WordPress, and I really love it. Thank you. And apparently I'm a metronome because I got it right on the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mika. That was excellent. Did we all learn a lot? Yes. 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 How many people are going to submit a 